Hi, booktube. So I'm going to follow the example of Sean the Book Maniac and drink some alcohol as I'm filming some wine to be more specific as I'm filming this video. So I'm going to, of course, figure as soon as I start, I get the, get the signal that I just got in a text message. Of course. Well, anyway. I get a day off tomorrow, which it seems like it's kind of following this game, the same schedule that I had last week, which was I work Monday and Tuesday, and this, and then I'm off Wednesday, and then I work Thursday and Friday, and then I'm off on Saturday, but I work again on Sunday. So I don't know when it's going to be like on, if I'm going to work again next Monday. I'm hoping I'm not working on my birthday. I mean, if it's not... A big deal if I do but although I am nervous he's I don't I'm not the kind of birthday I'm not the kind of person who likes attention drawn to me on my birthday you know I don't like people making it a big deal I mean yeah I want to go out to dinner with my family and I appreciate getting receiving gifts and stuff like that or birthday wishes but like I hate it at restaurants and that was my one of my concerns when my when I was trying to get my friends back from Maryland to come visit me for my birthday. I was, you know, I was worried that I would have to warn, I would have to tell them, explain to them that, no, I don't like, and I'm serious, I, I really do not like, I hate it when someone, they tell the hostess or the waiters and waitresses at restaurants and they, they proceed to come over and sing the birthday song. In some, in some restaurants, like the Mexican restaurants, you have to wear the silly sombrero hat. I don't like that kind of attention. It embarrasses me, and I don't mean that in as in, Oh, I'm so embarrassed. I mean, as in, like, okay, I don't, I'm not comfortable with this. I don't like it. Please go away. Like, I mean, I hate it. I mean, I don't mean as in, like, oh, I'm blushing or something or like, oh, this is so, you know, I seriously hate it. I hate, I'm not the kind of person who likes attention. So I was, you know, I was worried that my, you know, that I would have to explain that to my friends if they came to visit, but it turns out that they ended up not coming, and it's kind of too late now because I would have to ask, I have to ask off two weeks in advance, and one of them just got a new job, so I understand, I get it, I mean, I'm still a little disappointed, but I get it, and plus, I got Terry from Florida, so, I mean, she's, no, she's not coming this month, but she will be, I'll see her towards the end of next month, because she's coming on the cruise. So I'm happy about that. But um So anyway, I'm I just hope I don't have to work on that day because I know that they do I mean, I don't think they do anything like sing happy birthday or anything like that, but I think they do do like for everybody they get the they put out a cake or something because I think I've seen that. If I've come in the break room and there will be a cake and because it's someone's birthday. But um I just I just hope I don't want attention drawing me. Although they, I although I, you know, I'm probably worrying about nothing. It's probably it's not like any. I don't think anyone's gonna say anything because they don't know unless they tell them. And sometimes I have this moment of where I do like I, you know, I want to let people know. Guess what? It's me, me day. You know, even though I'm not a person who likes, I don't like attention. I, I have moments of diva ness, you could say. And sometimes I might slip and tell people because I kind of, part of me does want attention. But not, I'm not, when I say that, I don't mean I want, like, look at me, look at me, I'm the best. I just, you know, it is kind of nice when people wish you happy birthday. And especially since I get to tell people that, guess what, I look like I'm eight, I'm 16 or 18, but I'm actually 30 today. But so sometimes I have moments where I'm like, I, I'm flattered by the attention, but then other times, but most of the time I don't like it. Or at least I only want like a little bit, like maybe one person to pay attention to me. So, of course, like I said, as I always say, all my days, as with my days off, I'm going to talk about what I'm going to read tomorrow. So I'm going. I'm, I'm going to read this book tonight, but I'm probably going to finish it up tomorrow. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I might surprise myself. But the thing is, I've said this a million times before that I like watching TV or I like looking at videos on the internet as much as the next person. 
So sometimes, you know, I'm definitely learning more about how to manage my time, especially with this job and everything, and how I'm realizing I have a limited amount of hours before I, like, come in, and if I want to stick to my bed schedule, I at least try to be falling asleep by 12. Although what I end up having is I get in bed by 12, but I stay up and read, which I think is a little bit better. I mean, at least I'm not on the computer because, or looking at staring at my phone. Although I will stare at my phone for a minute because if I'm talking to Terry, for instance, then, you know, I don't want to just, I don't, you know, I don't like disappearing too early on her. First of all, I gotta say goodnight to her because we started this little routine and sometimes I get so tired that I'm thinking, why did I start that? Damn it. Because it's like takes, because you're so tired that you don't even want to type. You just want to hit the off button and go to close, turn the light off and just go to sleep. But, um, and then I keep my phone by my bed, which, I, you know, maybe I should stop doing that. Because, like, sometimes, you know, I'll say goodnight, but Terry, you know, she'll be doing something else and she doesn't respond right away. So, like, I'm starting to drift off and then I hear the ding or the buzz and it just drives me crazy. So I'm thinking I should put my phone somewhere else so I don't have to hear that when I go to bed. Like maybe I should put my phone on one of my, on the extra desk I have in my room. Yeah, but maybe that's where I should put my phone so that it's farther away. But then, you know, the problem is having to, you know, if I end up, like, I'm still talking to her for a little bit when I decide to crawl in bed, then it's like I have to get up. And turn off my phone and be able to type my message on my phone. So it's just typical laziness. But anyway, enough with all that rambling. So, um, but I'm probably gonna, but anyway, when the, the book I'm referring to is Lies of Lac Lamora by Scott Lynn. See, I'm almost done and I will be doing a review for this soon. Um, probably like tomorrow. But, um, I do, this is the first book I'm going to review this month, but it's not the first book I've read this month. Because I, if you look at my Goodreads page, you know I've read two other books this month already. But there's a sequel, there's a third book amongst those two books. There's, there's another one. So, in they're really short books. Like, um, like the first one is like, I think, 56 pages. Um... So it's, I want to get all of those done because there's really not much I can say about them. And so I want to just get them all done so I can talk about them all at once. And then I will probably, well, I kept wondering though, if I donate them, who would, who would, there would be their, ah, getting tongue tied here. Would there be anyone that would be interested in them? Like, because they're not, I mean, they're decent and entertaining, but first of all, they're really short. And... You know, they're not the greatest, and there's a lot of editing mistakes in these, which I'll talk about all this. So, you know, I'm not going to say anymore, because then basically, what's the point of me giving a review if I'm going to just say all I want to say in here? But, I, either way, I don't know, I think I probably should, because it's not like I'm ever going to read them again. But, I don't know. So, just, and I mean, they're, all, the funny thing is, they're not that big. I mean, they're like comic books. See, look, look how thin this is. So they're, they're not, they're not that big. So they don't take up a lot of space, but I mean, like I said, am I going to ever read them again? You know, I read them once. I always make that mistake of getting books from the Supercon or other, you know, I don't know if I ever had any books from me, Awesome Con. I think I did once. Um, and then it ends up being like an eh kind of story. And maybe it's because, I mean, and no offense to indie authors, but maybe it's because they're independent, so there's no guarantee they're going to be that great. That's, like, the risk when you're going with an independent author. And I think that's why people are so, like, iffy about, um, so, uh, about, like, when people on BookTube publish books. Because these people are, you know, they're independent authors most of the time, so it's like, how do, do people... No, now of course, it does kind of bother me when people are like, "Oh, I'm staying away from BookTube published." You know, books published by BookTubers. It's like, 
you know, and it almost makes me wary myself because it's like not wary of them because I think I've decided, you know, I'm if I'm in, if Sasha Aldberg's book sounds interesting, that I'm gonna get it. Now I know that um, Christine from Pull and Bananas. I'm not a contemporary reader, especially not YA or college contemporary books. Excuse me. So I probably will never, and it's nothing to do with her. I'm sure the book is great. I just, I'm not into that genre. Other, like, I have read adult contemporary though, so, like, um, like, you could argue, you could say, like, the female persuasion is contemporary. But, um, anyway, although I think that's more literary. I don't know. I don't know what a little, what's considered literary. I keep going back and forth with that, with the definition of that. But anyway, so I guess because you never you never know, maybe you won't be good. Maybe they'll they'll still do a lot of the tropes that you don't like, a lot of the cliches, the writing. We don't know if it's good, especially you know because independent indie authors don't necessarily, they probably don't get the best editors. Like I mean, as I was about to tell you, this the book I'm talking I was talking about earlier doesn't have has a little bit of mistakes. So, but I still want to read them. And I think it's all about opinion, and that doesn't mean it's a these are bad books just because a lot of people. And I I don't think booktubers should stay away from those kind of books, just because like or just get them from the library if the library has them, get them from the library. You know, although if they're independently published, maybe they're not at the library. I don't know, but um, although I mean, like her Sasha's book, Sasha and Lindsay's book is a bookstore, so I would think it would be at the library too. But I don't know. Anyway. I'm still interested. I'm kind of interested. I keep going back and forth with, with her book, with her duology. She just published the second book. Um, but anyway, it makes me aware, it makes me, and I think the part of the reason is also because I want to write a book one day, I want to be an author someday, which I, who knows if ever is that going to happen, because if that ever will happen. I saw like Yoda just now. Um, but... I don't know if I'll ever do any, any publish because I am so lazy. And I know it's my own fault. I have no reason to get mad at anybody. It's just me being lazy and procrastinating it. And it's, I feel so guilty because my dad is working all hard on his own book. He's on the second draft. And he's able to discipline himself and I'm not, you know. It's just, it's pathetic actually. But anyway, um, enough of that rambling. So... Of course, the only reason why that came up was because I was talking about this. But. So I'm going to read this. I might, who knows, I might surprise myself and finish this tonight, but I don't think so. I think there might be a little bit left I have to read tomorrow. But it's, it, it was really, I had a really fun time reading this. I can't wait to read the next book. And I'm really, really hoping that I get the second one before my birthday. Because I got the third book. I don't have the second one. And every time I go to the Books A Million in my town, it's never there. But I have the second book. They didn't even have this one. They just have the second. They had the third book. So it just kind of like, what the heck? But I think part of the problem is that's a smaller bookstore. So there's no guarantee they will always have a whole series. Like the other, the first, the previous books in the series, they might have the most recent book, but they won't have the first or the second book, or the first book if like they, you know. But anyway, I had such a fun time with this one. I think, well, I don't know because I like both. Like this has been compared to Six of Crows. It has similar and it has similar main characters and explores a similar kind of story about a group of criminals slash thieves going on like he uh, heist and stuff but although this one is not so much about a heist as it's about this group of people known as the gentleman bastards who perform cons and they um but unfortunately they get into more trouble than you know that it's worth which kind of the same thing, but it's it's a little different. Um, so I don't know if I like this one or that one more. Because I feel like you really, if a, I hate it. I mean, I know it's a marketing tool, you know, to get people to buy the book. But it just drives me crazy when people compare books. Like, 
I only, I mean, yes, I just, the only, the only time I will mention it is if, would be like, if you like this book, you will probably like this book. Or if other people have made the comparison, and I see it too, then yeah, I'll, I'll point it out. But I don't like it when people say, then this is the next Twilight, or the next Harry Potter, or this is like Harry Potter, but for, like, what they say about the magicians is, they say it's an older version of Harry Potter, or Nevermore is like Harry Potter. I mean, there might be, they might be similar, or explore some of their themes, or there's definitely some things about it that make you think, oh, this person is a fan of this book. But I just, because it's like, you, it gives the readers these high expectations, and these books might never meet those expectations. And it's a little unfair to the books and the author to have them compared to an already popular book. done and it's so frustrating because it's like I'm working so much and yeah I'm only part-time but still I mean like I said there's certain hours I have to be at work and I again yes I can bring these books with me because they're the right size to fit in my little lunch bag but I only get 50 minutes I don't get a break and then sometimes the TV's on so I get distracted and sometimes I start up a conversation with my co-workers but Finally there. I'm finally almost done. Finally. And this is awesome. And um, I kept showing you guys this book. This is the book. I'm probably going to just get this done tomorrow. This, And then once I'm once I read this one, then I can do a review. But although this one is a little bit longer. This one, this one's longer. Let's see how many chapters are in this one. Or how many sections. Yeah, there's 15. There's 15 chapters. So, this one's longer, so I might not get it done tomorrow. But I don't see myself taking too long with this one. I mean, maybe I will, because if I'm not as into it, but it's, like, I want to read it because, you know, it's, I feel like, it's not super long of a book, so I want to just get it done. You know, I'm definitely one of those, if I bought a book, then I'm gonna, and I'm mildly interested in it, then I'm gonna read it. At some point. So I'm going to read some of this tomorrow. But it, it's a little longer than the other two. So I might not get it done tomorrow. But I'm wondering if there's more to these. Like maybe the guy has a website. Or maybe these are just bits and pieces from some of his. Because I think he's a comic book. I think I read that he's a comic book artist as well. So maybe this is from his comic book, and it's like a book version of his comics. And maybe that's why it, the chapters are so short. But they are fun, you know. It's this girl adventurer, and um, she's a pirate, and she's going on these missions. And then the previ the prequel book, the first one, is uh, she's a vampire sent on assassination missions. And I don't know, I don't know if it's adult or not. I mean, there's, like, no cuss words or sex or anything in these books so far, but. I don't know, I think it's adult or YA. I'm not sure. I don't, if I ever see an author again, I'll have to ask him. Um, hold on, that'd be kind of awkward. Okay, and then the other two books that are guaranteed that I'm going to read are Handmaid's Tale. And I'm really liking this one too, but I'm finding myself getting angry and finding, not being able to fathom how these women are treated. I'm getting so frustrated how submissive they are. And... But it's it's definitely interesting. And the chapters are short, so I'm on chapter 20 and there's 46 chapters, so if I can read like 30, or up to 36 even, then... I can get this done in a week. Maybe shorter than that. But, I mean, like I said, the problem is I'm working so much more. Hopefully I won't be working as much next week. But, I mean, maybe they're working me a lot this month because they're going to give me that one week in June off. I really hope so. I mean, like my mom said, it's probably just that, like, the one time I got denied was probably just because I didn't ask. Like, I asked them a little too late. Um, and they probably already have the schedule and everything to set up, so I'm sure I'll get it, but I still get nervous waiting. 
that they're not. And this is kind of one of those things where I, you know, I mean, I don't have to go on this vacation, but I put the money in. My friend is coming, and this is the one time a year I see her. Although I might see her in October, um, because we might go to Disney because we gotta use my grandma's timeshare in Florida. So I might see her again this. Oh, still see her in October possibly. But I put a lot of money into this, so I wanna, I wanna do it. I wanna go on this cruise. But I can't be like pitching pitching a hissy fit at work if they don't get me in. But I'm sure they will. I mean, I still just get really nervous every time I see I get the I get I see that it's pending. And then I still don't know. I mean but I think they wait until it gets closer before they approve it approve it. You know, and I asked way back, like earlier this year, so like it won't be until June. So I don't know if it's the wine, or I'm just talking a lot, but my mouth is incredibly dry. Like I need some water, but I'm not gonna film. I'm not gonna get water until after I film this. So in case you don't know, but most people I'm sure you do, especially since the TV show came out. I think last year, maybe the year before. Actually, you know, I think it was last year. This is a dystopian story by Margaret Atwood about this woman, oh friend, and she's living in, she's in Montreal, Canada, that's where the story is set, and in this world, in this future, women have just become breeding machines. You're either a breeder, someone who makes the, the guy have sex with you and you make the babies, and then, or you're like a wife or a teacher or a caretaker. So there's not many roles for women, and they are suppressed. Like, they basically wear none outfits except for they're red and white. And, like, our main character doesn't even vaguely remember her name. It just, it reminds me of 1984 with the whole suppression of these people. Except most of the focus is on the women. Most of the suppression is on the women. And it feels very, like, religious controlled. It's, which it's kind of disturbing, and it's it's scary to think about. But although I'm I'm still one. Although I feel like they don't really explain why this happened. I think, or at least someone said that it, they were in their review that they didn't like that it didn't really explain how they got to the situation. Like a lot of YA dystopians authors, they usually explain why these, even if it's a silly reason or a reason that doesn't make sense, they still explain it, why this, why this world is, why the world has become the way it is, like, um, in the Hunger Games, I think there was a war going, there was a war that happened, and it resulted in the way things are, and that, you know, in that the Hunger Games themselves are, like, the reminder of that war. Like an homage to it or something, and I think, and then in the um, Divergent series, I think it does get explained when they get beyond the wall or whatever. And I think the guy explains that it was an experiment this whole time. I mean, I don't know if I'm because I think I've been told that the movies and the books are different, and I've never read the books, I've seen bits and pieces of the movies, but that's it. But I'd be curious about the series. And I'm, what I'm going to do when I'm done with the book, I don't know if I'll keep it. What I'll probably do is ask my mom to see if she's interested in reading it. But there, she's not as avid of a reader. Which is so frustrating that no one, none of my, like, my, my friends read, are interested in reading. But they don't read, like, I, they don't read as widely as I do. Like, Terry from Lord is definitely a character reader, which why am I telling you? I mean, you guys hear this all the time in my videos, so there's really no point. I mean, I've already said this before, so I'm just going to shut up about that. Because I've already told you. Um, I'm going to read that. So, and then I'm going to get back into reading Sarah Waters' A Little Stranger. And I can't wait to read I love how she writes and how vivid, vividly she writes. And just you just get lost in the story and just... You, you're so engaged and want to know what's happening and that like she reminds me a little of Stephen King and the fact that she really gets deep and doesn't just 
give you introduce you to the main to the situation, the characters, and introduce you to the conflict, and then you know you try you go through all these the slow process with the conflict and everything, and then you gotta solve it, and then you know it's happily ever after, or as happily ever after as you can get. What those two authors do is they really introduce you to this world and these characters, and you spend a lot of time with them, and even if that can seem tedious. You know, those you can, that stuff you can assume is part of it and that there's a reason why the author is touching on this stuff. Even if it doesn't seem, point, doesn't, it seems kind of pointless or it doesn't have anything to do with the plot per se. Like, in the beginning of this one, this rich family, you know, that our main character is a doctor from middle class and he kind of becomes part of this rich family or what's, what's left of the, this family. And, you know, kind of takes care of them and we know we get some background on the family and how the the the, ma the last remaining male family member was in the war and that he has leg problems now. And the doctor, our main character, Dr. Faraday, is kind of treating him for that. And how they're not doing really well. They're in very, they're not exactly impoverished, but they're not doing well financially. And there's, they decide, at one point, the mother decides she wants to throw this party. Um, and then some friends of theirs and my, come with their daughter, their little girl, and she gets bitten by the dog. And there's this whole thing about the dog, which really just, that part, oh my god, that made me, that made me so sad. I hated that part because it was like, a dog doesn't just... Unless they're a rabbit or something, and this dog clearly wasn't rabid, they're not going to just attack someone. I'm sorry, your girl, I'm sure she's sweet and perfect and everything, but the only reason the dog would bite the girl is if it was provoked. And you're delusional if you, I mean, like, I understand they got, they are upset, and they kind of made a good, they... And they're worried that the dog that the dog might give their dog make their daughter sick and that she's severely wounded and everything. But uh, telling them that they have to kill their dog, it's like what the hell, people? Your daughter probably provoked them, and they're not saying your daughter's a bad kid. They're just saying she might have acted. She might have done something to the dog, and that they spoiled their daughter. The daughter was a. I could you know, I mean they were inviting her to stay up late for this party and allowing her to drink a little bit of alcohol, and she's probably like ten years old. And it just was like, you could tell just from that part, you know, their daughter was probably spo a spoiled little brat. And she probably did something to the dog. But then, here's where the whole the little ghost story gets in there. That one of the, the only maid, the young sir maid that they have, said that there's this person in the house that will make bad things happen. So maybe there's this person was provo was doing something to make mischief and make like either whispering to the little, in the little girl's ear part of like you know, well it'd have to be that because dogs you can't communicate with dogs I mean maybe spirits can I don't know but um, who knows maybe that the, the spirit possessed the dog although why did it was it I mean maybe because it's a poltergeist or something I don't know it might be a poltergeist and that might be why it like got the dog. To bite that little girl. But, I mean, we don't know the exact details. I'm just guessing that something along the, those lines is what happened. It could, like I said, it could be a poltergeist. It could be one of the relatives. But, so those are the books I'm going to mostly focus on tomorrow. And I might buy the bookstore tomorrow. I don't know. I mean, I kind of need to try not to. I mean, who, maybe I should just go to the library, but then the problem is that once I get in the library and get a book, then I'll be like, oh, I have to read this book now. You know? So I'm still kind of trying. I don't know when eventually I'll go because I, you know, I buy more books than I get through them. I think that's why my mom didn't believe me when I, when I basically applied her. I have read a lot. You know? Because I end up just adding, like, any more books. And then the other books that I have to get to, um, I want to read a little bit more of American Gods. And, words. and I don't have anything to say because all, um, I've already said that in my last reading on my day off, 
video and then Count of Monte Cristo I need to definitely read a lot of that. I wanna read a lot of that. You know, I should maybe I should consider focusing on that one tomorrow. And then a conjuring of light. I definitely need to read that because it's been a while. I mean I already last year I already read um a gathering of shadows, so I finally need to read Conjuring of Light. And I'm still debating if I want to donate it to the bookstore or not. Thing is that maybe like, I'm still kind of going back and forth because, I mean, it's only three books. It's only a trilogy, so it doesn't take up a lot of room. And Throne of Glass takes up more room. But then part of me wants to hold on to Throne of Glass because I have a book group to, on Facebook dedicated to it. And, you know, it's kind of hard to remember what happened the stuff when you haven't read it in a, lot, in a long time. So I almost feel like I need to reread it. So I don't... I don't know. I'm, I keep going back and forth with Sarah J. Mess's books, in all honesty. Um, I mean, maybe I should just get, give that group to someone else. I don't you know. But I don't know. Like, I don't know how to do that, though. I also have gotten to finally watch The Magicians because I totally forgot to watch this season. This past season of The Magicians. I meant to, and it just slipped my mind that day, and then I just forgot to watch it the rest of the, the other the rest of the day this year of that season so what I need to do is I'm gonna check and see if it's on demand it might not be though I don't know I really hope it is if not then I might have to wait until Netflix because I know it's on net I know it's been on Netflix so I have to wait for Netflix yeah maybe I should just do that because there's no guarantee it'll be on demand um, but anyway, so that's my reading I'm going to do tomorrow on my final, another day off. And then, like I said, my next day off won't be until Saturday. But I am, one on Thursday, I think I'm going in at 11, so I'll get home a little earlier than 5, like a, few, no, a couple hours earlier. And then, I don't know when it's going on Friday. I don't know when I'm getting home on Friday. But I'll have to check. I have to double check. That might be another noon to 5 day. I don't know, but unfortunately that means that no trip to South Carolina where my grandma wants to visit my grandmother. I mean, my parents can go, but then that means I have to rely on Uber or some friends. But I think while they're still late, I'm probably going to sit outside and do some reading while, they're, while we have still light. Which I love. So one of the things I love about springtime and summertime is that at five and six you're still in daylight. It doesn't really get dark until like around seven or eight, I think. Which is really nice. And then I could just sit outside on the deck and do that. And I would love to do roast some marshmallows this month. Um But anyway. Maybe we can do that on my birthday. Maybe that night. That'd be fun. But anyway, so we'd love to know what you guys are reading this, this month. I mean, I mean to, tomorrow or this week, what you've been reading so far. And if you like this video, be sure to give a thumbs up and click subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I hope you are enjoying your reading. And I will talk to you all later. All right, bye.